Are you ready to uncover the long-lost treasures and solve the mysteries of Oak Island alongside the Legina brothers and their team? In this captivating video, we'll witness their efforts to drain the swamp, explore the mysterious boulder pathway, and uncover a game-changing discovery in the money pit. Let's dive in and unlock the truth together. On Oak Island, a group of treasure hunters were on a mission to find something incredible. They had been searching for over 200 years and all they had found were strange symbols on a stone, bits of bone, and a red cross. These clues hinted at a treasure that might be linked to the Knights Templar from a long time ago. In the latest adventure on The Curse of Oak Island, the team found a circle of big rocks in a swamp. They were excited because they thought this could be a big breakthrough. To help them understand what they found, they asked Dr. Ian Spooner, an expert in rocks and soil. Dr. Spooner believed that the swamp was made by people a very long time ago. The team was eager to see what secrets the swamp held, and they hoped it would lead them to the hidden treasure. As the team explored the swamp, they found huge rocks that looked like the ones in another place on the island called Nolan's Cross. The rocks even had the same blue clay on them that others had found deep in the money pit many years ago. The team thought these discoveries were important and might help them solve the mystery. Even though they had drained the swamp a week before, the team faced challenges like mud and sticks as they tried to uncover the secrets hidden beneath the rocks. The swamp kept its secrets, making the treasure hunters curious about what more it might reveal. Although a team led by Rick and Marty, along with others, had been digging through mud for five weeks, they found a big stone area that Dr. Spooner said was made by people. Near the swamp's eye, they also found boulders that made them wonder if they were part of the stone area. A guy named Jerry wasn't sure. He'd seen boulder pavements before, but they usually had a specific kind of soil with them. They talked about sediment from 8,000 years of wind filling in the area fast after it was deposited. The team noticed the filled-in cellars looked just like the uncovered stones. It was odd, and they couldn't figure out a natural process that could make it happen. There was no composted layer hinting at some disruptive event in the past. Dr. Spooner surprised everyone by saying the stones might have been put there on purpose. They wanted more proof to solve the mysteries of the swamp. The talk shifted to the activity beneath the surface and the need to explore deeper. Meanwhile, 1,000 miles away in Traverse City, Michigan, Marty, Rick's brother, had an important phone call with Mark Monahan of Irving Equipment Limited. They talked about the steel coffer dam around Smith's Cove, a key part of the Oak Island investigation. The government permit for the cofferdam would expire in a month. Marty stressed the urgency to remove it and follow environmental rules by restoring the area. The team faced pressure to finish these tasks before the permit expired, adding more complexity to the Oak Island mystery. The team really wishes they could keep that steel dam forever, but time is their enemy. The permission is about to end, and they have to act fast. They need to remove the dam's big metal sheets, and that comes with its own set of problems they have to figure out. Taking apart the dam is a tight schedule. It needs about three weeks to take it off the site safely. They're getting ready to do that, trying to set up everything so they can meet the deadline. To remove the dam, they have to use huge cranes and heavy machines all around the area. This means that Rick, Marty, and their pals will have to stop their search in the uplands and Smith's Cove for the rest of the year. The people from Irving, who are helping with all this, are really into the project. It's not just a regular job for them. They're putting a lot into it. While discussing their commitment, someone shares some exciting news. When they were digging in the uplands, looking for a possible tunnel, a hole filled up with water suddenly. It was like a water geyser shooting up, and everyone got pretty excited about it. Just a week ago, they were doing some tests in the uplands, and it seemed like there might be a hidden tunnel underground. Even though they had to stop digging for a bit because of the water-filled hole, the team is hopeful. They think this might finally be the main flood tunnel they've been looking for. Now they're in a rush to take the dam down. They have to do it in a way that doesn't harm the environment, so no dirt or stuff gets into the ocean. Time is running out, and they also need to find a boat in Smith's Cove. It's going to be a busy scene with all the equipment they have to use. The team is ready to face the challenges ahead, and they're determined to make it all work out. 
Rick and Billy, who had a big job to do. They heard that time was running out to explore the uplands of Smith's Cove, so they decided to focus on finding a special tunnel that brought seawater into the money pit. Billy, the heavy equipment operator, was ready to dig as deep as possible. Everyone hoped they'd discover a tunnel, and the excitement was building. Rick knew that if they found and closed off this tunnel, they could solve some big mysteries on Oak Island. As they started their work, they found many old wooden structures at the uplands and Smith's Cove. These were clues left behind by others who searched for something important in the past. Rick and Billy felt like they were on the right path. Just two weeks ago, they found a wooden structure with coconut fiber, which made them even more hopeful. Now they believed they were close to their goal. The main flood tunnel, guarded by tricky traps, might be just around the corner. The team thought about a wall they found and wondered if it was part of the tunnel or something else. They carefully cleaned the area, trying to get closer to the truth. While digging, they noticed an intact wall on one side. This made them wonder if they were dealing with a tunnel at all. They took their time to figure out if it was a real wall or just the impression of boards on the clay. They expanded their efforts, inching closer to solving the puzzle. Time was ticking, and they felt the pressure, but they didn't give up. Billy's big equipment uncovered more clues, and Rick paid attention to every little detail. Even if they didn't find the tunnel, they were on an exciting adventure, working together to uncover the secrets hidden beneath Oak Island. They found something exciting. As they dug in the ground, they discovered a strong wall. It didn't look like a regular tunnel. The team felt curious and wondered if it could be something special. One person in the group noticed the intact wall and shared their suspicions. They thought it might not be just any tunnel, but something more interesting. They all looked closely, eager to learn more about their unexpected discovery. While they chatted about their find, someone named Ginger joined them. Even though they were on a treasure hunt, they took a moment to say hello and ask how Ginger was doing. The atmosphere was filled with excitement and friendship. As they continued digging, one person explained the significance of the wall. They encouraged the team to clear away the dirt to see it better. The team worked together to reveal more details about the structure they had found, which was about six feet below the surface. In the midst of their exploration, another team member shared insights into their mission. They were thrilled to find a wooden shaft, adding a new twist to their quest for treasure. But there was still uncertainty, and they knew they needed to expose more of the structure to confirm its origins. While one group focused on digging, another group investigated an area called the Uplands. Alex Legina and Peter Brunetti arrived to check on the progress of archaeologist Laird Nevin and conservator Kelly Barassa. They were digging carefully, searching for important objects that could tell them more about Daniel McGuinness one of the first people to discover the money pit in 1795. Two weeks ago, the team got permission from the government to start their exploration. Led by Laird, they dug in small sections, looking for clues hidden underground. Recent scans of the ground hinted at a possible underground space, making them even more curious. The story took an interesting turn when they heard about a theory from James McQuiston, he believed that McGinnis didn't just stumble upon the money pit. He knew about it beforehand because he was connected to something called Freemasonry. This added a mystery to the team's adventure. Laird, Nevin, and Kelly were busy exploring the McGinnis Foundation. They found a building with a wall but no window, and they thought it was a clue, like a piece of a puzzle. Excited about this discovery, they talked about how this building could tell them part of the story of the McGinnis family. It was like finding a key to unlock the secrets of what happened to them on that lot. They were hopeful that this was just the beginning of solving the whole mystery. As they left the site, they kept their fingers crossed, meaning they were really hoping for good things. They were ready to follow any trails and learn more about the McGinnis family. Later that day, the friends joined others in a special room called the War Room. There, they listened to a report about a special artifact called an LED that Rick Legina and Gary Drayton found a week ago on Lot 17, near the Money Pit area. They were so curious about this artifact that they had a professor, Dr. Chris McFarland, join them via video to explain some test results. 
The tests used a powerful laser to study tiny bits of the artifact. It was like using a super microscope. The results showed that the artifact was made of lead, and there was something strange about it. It had mercury and tin. The friends were puzzled, wondering how this could happen. Was it natural, or did someone put these things there? A person who knew a lot about this stuff explained that the mercury probably didn't come from the lead itself. That's because when you heat up mercury, it disappears. This made the friends even more curious and surprised. They talked about different ideas, like one from a guy named Peter Amundsen. He believed that a famous person named Sir Francis Bacon, who lived a long time ago, had a way of keeping important papers safe using mercury. Some people even thought Bacon buried treasures on Oak Island. The friends couldn't believe what they were hearing. They wondered if Bacon, who was also thought to be the secret writer of plays by William Shakespeare, might have hidden those plays on Oak Island. It was like being part of a big adventure, trying to solve a mystery that had been going on for hundreds of years. People say he was a smart guy from England in the 1600s. Some folks believe he led a secret group called the Rosicrucian, connected to the Knights Templar, and that he hid treasures on Oak Island. They even think he might have put Shakespeare's secret writings in a vault on the island, protected by a special substance called mercury. They think about friends of the Knights Templar who used to hang out there. It's like connecting dots on a treasure map. Next, they discuss another discovery, a lead thing that might be from the same faraway place. They remember a 700-year-old lead cross found earlier. That cross also came from a place linked to the Knights Templar. It's like finding puzzle pieces that fit together, creating a bigger picture. Now we jump to Oak Island. There's a team racing against time, like in an exciting race. Rick and Craig hear about something important near an old home. It's like a hidden door. Could it lead to a secret basement below? Maybe the person who lived there, Daniel McGinnis, hid something special in the money pit. The team digs and finds something cool, a trap door. It's like a secret entrance. They wonder if McGinnis used it to hide a super valuable treasure. As they dig, they find an old knife. It's the oldest thing they've found. The knife is super old and fancy, like from a night story. The team got super excited about the knife. Laird said it was different from other stuff they found. It was like finding a special piece of history. They were finishing up their search but the best part was still to come. As they dug more, they discovered something surprising, a big house. The house was way bigger than they thought and the things they found were really, really old. This made the treasure hunt even more interesting. But here's the tricky part. The McGinnis Foundation, where they were digging, is a special place protected by the government. It meant they couldn't dig too much without a special permit. Laird had a permit, but it was not enough. To dig more, they needed another paper called an expanded permit. Getting that paper could take a long time, maybe even months. The team's geologist, Terry, talked about the why behind the things people did on Oak Island. They wanted to understand the story behind every little thing they found. Every discovery was like a piece of a big storybook, and they wanted to make sure to read every page. The bone-handled knife was a special page directly connected to Oak Island's history. Later that day, two guys named Rick and Terry went to a place near Smith's Cove. There, a guy named Billy was using big machines to dig a hole in the ground. They hoped the hole would connect to a secret tunnel leading to a place called the Money Pit. The guys went down into the hole and saw some walls. It was like a secret passage. They found wooden walls made by hand a long time ago. It reminded them of other things they found on the island. Billy had a plan to dig into the walls and see what was behind them. The wall had old wood that was cut with an ax. It looked just like the wood they had found in another place, shaped like a U. The friends thought the same group of people might have made both things a long time ago. While they were exploring, they noticed the year 1769 written somewhere. It made them wonder if the same group had been here using similar tools. The friends were excited about this discovery and couldn't wait to find out more. They found wood that had been cut with an axe, just like in a big U-shaped structure they had found underground last year. 
Scientists said that the U-shaped structure was built more than 25 years before they found the money pit in 1795. It made them think they might be close to finding a famous flood tunnel. The friends decided to lower a bucket into a deep hole to see what was down there. Bill told them to be careful and bring the bucket slowly. Everyone watched with anticipation, wondering what secrets the hole held. The bucket went down softly, and everyone hoped it would reveal something amazing. As it descended, they saw old wood, and it made them curious. They wanted to know if it was worn out or just playing tricks with the light. Bill carefully examined what the bucket brought up. The friends were excited to see something there. They couldn't believe what they might discover next. It felt like an adventure, with everyone on the edge of their seats. As the bucket continued to bring things up, the friends got a sense that they were onto something big. It felt like finding a hidden tunnel, something people had been looking for a very long time. The friends couldn't help but feel amazed at what might be waiting for them deep below. According to Bill, finding an original tunnel on Oak Island was like the best part of the day. They knew it was a crucial moment in their exploration. It made them wonder about the people who first made this tunnel and how determined they must have been. Rick, Billy, and Terry were on a big adventure to find a secret tunnel that connects to the money pit on Oak Island. They found cool stuff, but the sun went down, so they had to wait for a new day. When the sun came up, everyone was excited. Marty and Craig joined the team to help stop the tunnel that brings water to the money pit. They found something special, a piece of wood that looked really old. They thought it might be part of the tunnel. The wood was shaped like a U, and reminded them of a time long before the money pit was made. But there was a problem. This was their last chance to make a big discovery because they had to stop looking tomorrow. They needed to remove a big steel wall around Smith's Cove. While digging, they found more old things. Each one was unique and made them wonder if they were close to solving the Oak Island mystery. The team was curious and excited, but time was running out. Billy dug deeper, hoping to find more answers. The wood they found was so interesting, and they wanted to know if it was a part of the flood tunnel. With every scoop of dirt, the team felt the thrill of getting closer to solving the mystery. They knew they had to decide, keep looking for the tunnel, or stop because of the big steel wall. In the race against time, the team kept digging. They were determined to uncover the secrets hidden in Oak Island soil. Each find brought more questions but they were excited about the chance to solve a mystery that had been there for a very long time. As the day went on, the team wondered if the old wood and unique pieces held the key to Oak Island's secrets. The clock was ticking, but their hope and curiosity kept them going. They wanted to leave no stone unturned, hoping that every scoop of dirt would bring them closer to the answer they were searching for. Imagine a group of people with a never-ending thirst for knowledge and a lot of energy going on a mission to find riches that have been buried deep underground for more than 200 years. Today, we're going to join on an adventure like with the Legina crew like no other. We're going to dig through the layers of time to find the mystery secrets that are dormant on a strange oak island. Come with us as we dig deeper into history and into the unknown. Marty thought they needed more buckets to uncover more secrets. The others agreed and they quickly got two or three more buckets. Ready for a new discovery, they started digging, hoping to find structures hidden in the ground. As they dug, Marty hit something hard. It could be a rock or a big piece of wood, she thought. They looked closely at what they found, making sure not to miss any details. They talked about using a safety harness to stay secure while exploring. The team wondered if they had found the famous flood tunnel booby trap system. This was a tricky thing that puzzled people for a very long time. Excited and curious, they decided to investigate more to understand what they had discovered. They continued digging and soon they found a tunnel. It looked like a dark pathway going deeper into the ground, but they weren't sure how safe it was because it was about 50 feet below the surface. Still, they kept going, eager to find out more about this mysterious place. The team started to think they might have found the main flood tunnel that everyone had been looking for, the one that hid for centuries. They realized it wasn't very stable, and they needed to be careful. Trying to solve the mystery, they came up with a smart idea. 
they decided to put a camera on the side of a bucket to explore without going down themselves. This way, they could see what was below without any danger. With the camera in place, they lowered it down and began to see the secrets hidden beneath the surface. It was like magic as the camera showed them the hidden details of the flood tunnel. The team were thrilled to be part of a big adventure, getting closer to solving the puzzle that had intrigued people for so long. They gathered around a big digging machine. They wanted to find out what was hiding deep beneath the ground, but there was a problem. They couldn't make a safe hole to go down and see. So they came up with a clever idea. Instead of going down themselves, they decided to use a special camera on the digging machine's long arm. As the camera went down, the explorers saw something interesting on the left wall, lots of wood and structures. It looked like a puzzle waiting to be solved. Excitement filled the air, and they decided to follow the path with the wooden structures. But then, a surprise. The camera found a hole. Everyone wondered if it was a tunnel. The camera had gone through the wood, showing a mysterious space below. The team got curious, but they also knew it was important to be careful. Someone in the group thought it was best to leave that spot and go back up. Safety first. Back at the surface, they all gathered to talk about what they saw. Billy, one of the explorers, felt confident they had enough information to figure out the mystery. In a special room they called the War Room, the team watched the video from the camera. It showed the camera going down 30 feet, revealing rocks and interesting structures. The explorers talked about the chance of a collapsed tunnel and pointed out wooden beams on the sides. They wondered about the purpose of U-shaped structures they saw. The conversation then turned to dendrochronology, a fancy word for figuring out how old wood is. If the wood was old, it could tell them a lot. The team thought about what it would mean if the wood turned out to be really old, connecting it to a possible flood tunnel. They were super excited about a clue from the year 1769, thinking it could lead them to something valuable. But there was a catch. They needed proof that the wood they found was really, really old. They used a fancy method called dendrochronology to check the age of the wood. If it turned out to be old, it would mean they discovered something super important, like a key to a hidden tunnel. But the problem was, time was running out. Big machines were coming to take away a steel wall called a cofferdam, making it impossible for them to keep searching. Despite their hopes, they had to face the sad reality. The big machines were about to show up, and the team had to stop searching for the rest of the year. It was a real bummer. One of the team members pointed out something interesting. They found layers of soil and wood, which made them think there might be a secret tunnel. But they couldn't be sure until they got the results of their tests. As the machines roared to life, they took down the steel wall, ending a two-year adventure. The once busy site turned quiet. It was a bit sad, but they also found some cool stuff, like old numbers, a strong wall, and even a light-up cross that was really, really old. The team spent a lot of time and money to uncover these treasures, showing how important they were. The team felt a mix of emotions as they packed up. They discovered so much, but there was still a big question. Did they find everything? Oak Island kept some secrets, and the team couldn't help wondering what else was hidden beneath the soil. The island had a history full of exciting clues and dangerous curses. The team was determined to find out more no matter how long it took. However, people were searching for a special treasure for more than 200 years. They found a big stone with strange carvings, bits of human bone, and a lead cross linked to the Knights Templar. Six brave people had lost their lives trying to solve this mystery. To find the treasure, one more person had to give their life. Rick and Marty Legina lead a group. They were digging near Smith's Cove, hoping to uncover the main flood tunnel that had kept the treasure hidden for so long. In the daylight, the team faced a huge challenge. They found big boards from an old shaft in the uplands area. The team believed they were close to making a significant discovery. As they dug, they came across a deep shaft with no bottom in sight. Just a week before, they had found a vertical searcher shaft from 1850, built by the True Rock Company. It touched the main flood tunnel, but the treasure remained out of reach. Now, 
With determination in their hearts, the team was ready to face the mysteries beneath Oak Island once again. The scene was intense, with the brothers and their team eager to conquer the challenges of Oak Island. Ancient hand-carved timbers and mysterious shafts revealed the island's secrets. The team's excitement grew as they found another hand-carved timber, a clue left by those who came before them. The journey into Oak Island's heart continued, uncovering more secrets with each layer of soil they removed. The island guarded its treasures fiercely, testing those who sought its mysteries. The search for the main flood tunnel became more intense, but the team faced the challenge with courage. A week ago, Jack Bagley, one of the team members, dug deep and found a lot of coconut fiber near the bottom of the shaft. Everyone got really excited because coconut fiber was used in the past to set up traps protecting valuable treasures, like the one they believed was in the money pit. The team felt confident and eager to keep digging when they found large pieces of wood. These pieces hinted at an ancient structure that guarded the money pit, making the team even more determined to uncover its secrets. While they worked, they discovered old iron spikes from the 1700s. If these spikes were older than the original money pit discovery in 1795, it meant someone else might have built the structure, not the true rock company. The mystery deepened as they wondered if these spikes were connected to the hidden flood tunnel system. Amidst all this excitement, Gary Drayton joined the team in the war room for a meeting. They received news about a seismic scanning project conducted by Eagle Canada. This project involved exploding 18,000 dynamite charges across Oak Island, creating a map of possible hidden tunnels and structures beneath the ground. Through a video call, Rick's brother Marty and their partner, Craig Tester, shared the results of the project. The scanning process gave them clues about what might be hiding up to 300 feet below the island's surface. The team was thrilled by this new information and saw it as a potential breakthrough in their quest for the treasure. They were curious about what lay hidden underground. They looked at some fancy data that showed possible secret tunnels and strange things under the earth. One friend got super excited when they found something weird on the southeastern side of a big hole. They called it an obnoxious anomaly, which means something strange. The friends wondered if there were tunnels down there and talked about a line going to the money pit. They asked about flood tunnels, but it was like a puzzle with missing pieces. They found a big weird thing about 60 feet deep, like a spotlight on a mystery. The friends thought, could this be connected to a wooden thing they found before, way back in 1735? It was older than even the famous money pit. Now, the friends wondered if this strange thing could be a trap protecting the money pit. It felt like they were in a cool treasure hunt and they couldn't wait to find out more. Soon, two days later, two new friends joined the adventure. They brought a huge machine, like a superhero excavator, to dig deep into the ground. Everyone was excited to meet the new friends and see the superhero excavator in action. The new friends explained that the excavator had a super long arm, like a superhero's reach, to dig down 60 feet. The friends were amazed and happy to have such a powerful tool to uncover the secrets below. With a plan in place, they started the big mission. The friends chatted about the superhero excavator and how it was different from a regular one. It had a super long 64-foot reach, making it perfect for their special digging mission. The air was filled with excitement as Billy Gerhardt, an expert with heavy equipment, operated the excavator. The team was digging deep, hoping to find hidden secrets beneath the island. Billy was doing a great job, going down 50 feet into the ground just a bit away from their goal. Marty Legina, leading the team, was eager to uncover the mysteries of Oak Island. The team was hopeful, thinking they might find old flood tunnels that held the key to the island's secrets. As the day went on, Billy's work showed progress and everyone was impressed. The excitement grew as they got closer to the crucial 50-foot mark. Craig Tester and Jack Begley wanted to check things out up close, looking at the ceiling for any hidden clues. The team held their breath, hoping for some exciting news. Suddenly, a discovery changed everything. Water started rushing in, a sign that they might be onto something big. The team watched, talking about what this find could mean. The water was pouring in, and they started to think they might be close to uncovering the legendary flood tunnels. Marty Legina joined the group to see the excitement. The water kept coming, and the team wondered if it was fresh or salty. 
They were getting more and more curious about what they had stumbled upon. But then, things took a turn for the worse. Cracks appeared and the ground started shaking. It became dangerous and the team had to hurry to get out of there. The ground was collapsing, covering up the progress they had made with tons of dirt. Outside the dig site, the team gathered and thought about what had just happened. The danger reminded them of the challenges they faced in finding Oak Island's secrets. The flood tunnel, designed long ago to stop treasure hunters, had done its job. The team's efforts to uncover the island's mysteries were buried under the earth. They faced a big problem. The ground was not stable, and they had to do something quickly to make it safe. They decided to fill a hole to stop it from getting worse. This meant they had to stop digging for a while until the ground became steady again. The next day, the team was excited to continue their adventure. Rick, Marty, Craig, and others were eager to find something amazing in the swamp, which had a funny triangle shape. They were especially curious about the Eye of the Swamp, a special spot where they found a circle of stones under the water. While exploring, they heard a sound when their tools touched something metal. This made them really happy because they thought they might be about to discover something important. This discovery reminded them of a story from researchers who believed that long ago, a group called the Knights Templar hid precious treasures in the swamp. The story said that a painter named Nicholas Bussard knew about it and hid clues in three paintings. Everyone was excited about what they might find. They decided to drain the water from the swamp using a big pump and remove debris with a huge excavator operated by Marty and Billy. The eye of the swamp, with its circle of stones, held the key to solving the mystery they had been chasing for a long time. With their tools ready, the team started to drain the swamp. The water went away, revealing the ground below. Marty looked at the clues they had and thought about what they might find. The excitement was building up as they got closer to the eye of the swamp. As the water went away, the team could finally see the ground. Marty and Billy worked hard to clear away the mud and debris. They were determined to reach the eye of the swamp and find out what secrets it held. The team knew they were on an important journey and they couldn't wait to see what mysteries the swamp would reveal. While some of the team focused on getting rid of the water, Marty and Billy used a huge machine to scoop out water and junk. Marty kept an eye on things, making sure the swamp's heart was getting empty. As the sun went down, one of the team members was really excited about going back to a place called Lot 17. It seemed like a special spot where something interesting might be waiting. The next day, Rick and Gary explored Lot 17. It was near the Money Pit area, and a recent hurricane had made the island change a lot. The team hoped to find important clues or things from the past that got uncovered because of the storm. The team was excited to look for special things that might have come closer to the surface because of the hurricane. Lot 17 had been good to them before, and they were hopeful it would be again. In the middle of their search, Gary, who was really good at finding things with metal detectors, spotted something unusual, a big chunk that didn't belong there. Everyone got excited, wondering what it could mean. They talked about other things they had found before, like a very old lead cross, this cross was linked to a faraway place with knights and lots of history. The team wondered if the new discovery could be connected to these other special things. The next morning, Rick, Gary, and the team gathered at a place called the Eye of the Swamp. They had drained the area enough to start digging. It was time to explore a strange rock and metal formation that Gary and Marty found a few weeks ago. As they dug into the ground, Gary spotted something interesting, a big piece of rock. He thought it might be important, and the team got curious about what secrets it held. 